Page six of vector applications. Okay, so you got a radar screen here. And uh, basically it's uh, negative 100 to the left, 100 to the right, 100 up, negative 100 down to kilometers, okay? And it can see planes in any part of the circle. Okay, you got a plane that is outside of the circle. It is at uh, 200 comma uh, 100, so it's about there, okay? And it is flying uh, at a direction vector B. Okay, so eventually it's going to hit the circle. They're asking when it's going to hit the circle. Well, vector B looks like this. Okay, negative 3 in the x direction, negative 1 in the y direction, and its speed is 40 times square root of 10. Okay, first it asks you what's the velocity vector of the aircraft. So you know that the velocity vector is in the direction negative 3, negative 1. Uh, and you know it's the magnitude is 40 times square root of 10. So um, how do we make the velocity vector out of this vector and that? Well, unfortunately, this vector is not a unit vector. So first we need to make this into a unit vector. And uh, in order to make this into a unit vector, we divide by square root of 10 because the length of this vector happens to be the square root of 10 if you use Pythagorean's theorem, right? 1 squared plus 3 squared to the square root. Okay, so this is now the unit vector in direction of B. And then now we're going to multiply it times the speed, which is 40 times square root of 10. Now you know why they put that weird number square root of 10 in there, so that everything comes out to be nice and uh, uh, round here. So it's going to be negative 120 for X component, and then it's going to be negative 40 for the Y component. Okay? And uh, so this is the velocity vector that they talked about in A. B, write a vector equation for the path of the aircraft using T to represent the time and hours that have elapsed since 12 noon. Okay. The, velo the vector for the path of the aircraft. So this is going to be the position of the aircraft. And then we're going to put um, the position vector, which is um, the original position is 210 or 200 comma 100, right? And then we're going to put uh, t times the velocity vector, which is 120 and minus 40. And that's b. Um, c, find the position of the aircraft at 1 p.m. So now we just need to plug in 1 in for t, and that will give us the uh, position vector at that time. So it's going to be negative 120, negative 40. So we got 80 for x, and we got 60 for y, okay? And so that is uh, part C. Um, D, show that the aircraft first becomes visible on the radar screen at 1 p.m. Um, okay, at 1 p.m., it's at 80 comma 60. I guess what they're saying is show that 80 comma 60 is on the edge of that circle. So we could kind of do that with the uh, unit circle. Not the unit circle, but, you know, the circle is radius 100, not radius 1. So we could draw a picture, though. The x component is 80. The y component is 60. So in that case, what is the hypotenuse? Well, um, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, actually. So... 3 is to 60 is as 4 is to 80 as 5 is to 100. So you can see that since this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, the hypotenuse is 100. So we've just shown that the aircraft becomes visible on the radar screen at 1 p.m. Okay, E. Find the time when the aircraft is closest to the control tower and find the distance between the aircraft and the control tower at that time. Okay, so now this problem is similar to the shortest distance problem. So we know that the aircraft is not going to hit the control tower, but it's going to come very close. And so we just need to find that point S where uh, it's at the closest point. Okay, so um, we're going to have the vector uh, OS, which we'll say is, um, we'll uh, use the that equation. Okay, so we'll say like the uh, X component is going to be 200 minus 120t, and the y component is going to be 100 minus 40t, okay? 
and that is the um, the vector from the origin to the shortest path point. And then uh, we're going to scalar product that with uh, the equation or the velocity vector of the plane. Okay, because that is the, I don't know, the slope or the direction of the B vector. Okay, because basically what we're doing is we are going to take the, uh, we're going to, we're going to take the dot product of the orange vector and the red vector, and then we're going to see when that equals zero. Okay, so we've set it up here, and now it's just algebra. 200 um, times, no, this is, uh, it's not really bad algebra, but the problem is the numbers are so big, right, that we would just use numbers that were 10 times smaller wouldn't be so bad. These numbers take up a lot of space too. Okay. Let's see. So like for example, 200 times negative 120, that's going to give us like a huge number. 24, 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to multiply negative 120 times negative 120, that's going to give us 1, 4, 4, 0, 0. T. And then we got negative 40 times 100, that gives us negative 40, 0, 0. And then we got negative 40 times negative 40, that gives us 1600 T. Okay. So now we can combine these two orange terms and we can combine these two purple terms. And that will give us, uh, let's see, 16,000 T. And this would give me 4,000 plus 24,000, 28,000. Okay, and that needs to equal zero. So what does T equal at that time? Well, we're gonna, so now we can finally remove some zeros here. So now we have 16 T minus 28 equals 0, 16 t equals 28, t equals 28 divided by 16, <clears throat> which equals 7 fourths, okay, 7 fourths of an hour, I guess, and we're done. Okay, number 5, both a's position is given by 3 minus t, 2t minus 4 for the x and y coordinates, and both b's position is given by 4 minus 3t, and 3 minus 2t for x and y. The distances are in unit, kilometers and the times are in units. Find the initial position of each boat. Okay, so for boat A, the uh, initial position is going to be um, 3 and negative 4. 3, negative 4. And for boat B, the initial position is going to be uh, 4, 3, Okay, and um, the velocity vector of each boat is uh, going to be negative 1 and 2 for A, and for B, and it's going to be negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 and negative 2. Okay? That's velocity vectors. What is the acute angle between the path of the boat? Okay. So now we can take the two velocity vectors, which are the direction vectors, and we can take the scalar product to find the acute angle between the boats. So we have cosine of theta is equal to, and then we'll take the velocity of A, velocity of B. We'll scalar product them together, and then we'll find, we'll divide by the uh, magnitudes of each one. Okay? Um, so uh, VA, uh, the scalar product between these two would be uh, negative 1, 2, scalar product, negative 3, negative 2. So that would be... Um, negative 1 times negative 3, which would be 3, plus 
2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, is negative 1. So the scalar product would be negative 1. Now, what's the magnitude of each of these? The magnitude of that one is uh, square root of 5. The magnitude of this one is square root of 13. So we can uh, have five times square root of 5 times square root of 13. Um, okay. And that's equal to the cosine of theta. Let's find what theta is equal to. Well, on the calculator, let's figure out what is 1 divided by 1 divided by root. And inside the root, we're going to put 5 times 13. And that will give us 0.124. So cosine of theta is 0.124. And it's negative 0.124. But remember, we're looking for the acute angle. So we just ignore that negative sign. And we'll get the acute angle. 82.9 degrees. If we would have included the negative sign, then we would have gotten 180 minus 82.9 degrees. Okay, so that's part C. What about D? At what time are the boats closest to each other? Okay, so now we've got two equations. One of them is 3, negative 4, that's position A, plus T times negative 1, 2. Right, that's for boat A. So that's like, I don't know, we'll say R A. And then R B is equal to 4, 3 plus T times negative 3, negative 2. Uh, to figure out when the boats are closest to each other, we need a vector which says the difference between the two uh, boats. So what we could do is we could say uh, we're going to make a vector called um, distance. And the distance vector is basically going to be the two position vectors subtracted from each other, RA minus RB. So we're going to have, um, mm, this is going to be a big mess, 3 minus T, which is the X part of the A vector. And then we're going to subtract 4 minus 3t, which is for the, uh, the v vector. So we're going to have a minus b, right? And then uh, we're going to have negative 4 plus 2t minus, and then here we're going to have 3 minus 2t, which is for the b vector. Okay. And then we're going to simplify this. We're going to, we're going to have 3 minus 4, and we'll have negative t plus 3t, right? We're going to distribute the negative sign. Negative 4 minus 3, and then we're going to have plus 2t plus 2t. Okay. And then we can combine like terms. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Uh, 3t minus t is plus 2t. And then uh, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. 2t plus 2t is 4t. Okay. Um, and then, so this is the position. This, it's like the vector which shows the distance between the two positions. Okay. So the idea is, okay, when is this magnitude maximum? So let's figure out what the magnitude is by uh, using Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 2t minus 1 squared plus um, 4t minus 7 squared. Okay, and then so when when is that maximized? Eesh. So this is like um, just a big quadratic mess. So we're going to have 4t squared minus um, 4t plus 1. And then here we're going to have 16t squared, and then uh, minus 56t plus 49. Square root of that. Now let's combine like terms. Now we have uh, 20t squared minus 60t plus 50. Okay, and now we want to know 
when that is maximized. Well, that is maximized um, That is maximized when that parabola, uh, if we knew the center of that parabola. Okay? So there's a couple ways to do that, but probably the easiest way, if you have the calculator, is to just graph it and then see what the maximum is. Now, otherwise, you would have to like complete the square maybe to find the uh, vertex, and then that would be the answer. But um, we don't know derivatives yet. We could use derivatives to do that. So there's several different ways to do it, but let's assume that you got the calculator because it is a, it is a, you know, homework problem set. So we're going to just put this in here: 20x squared. Oops, that's not squared. Delete, 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 delete. Okay squared okay minus 60t minus 60 x plus 50 okay and then we're going to graph it and it's probably going to be off the screen because the numbers are so huge okay so we're going to do uh, not stat we're going to zoom zoom still thinking oh there it is interesting that's not the direction that I thought it would be in. Oh, I get it. Yeah, you're right. We want to know when the distance is minimum, not when it's maximum. So there's the point right there, right? Let's use table and see if we can find it. Let's see when the smallest value of y is. Ooh, there. It's 5. Okay, so the smallest value is 5. And it occurs at t equals 1.5. So at t equals 1.5, the distance is equal to 5, and that's the smallest, okay? What time are the both closest to each other? Okay, so the time is 1.5. That's it.